As a CISO, one threat I'm constantly worried about is phishing. It's a primary attack method for threat actors, and without the proper security controls, you're placing your organization at risk. One method of preventing these types of attacks is to reduce the attacker's ability to impersonate your domain. And to do that, you have to know the critical email authentication programs that are soon gonna become your best friend. So let's start with the three most important email authentication protocols you have to know. We're gonna start with SPF. SPF or Sender Policy Framework is an improved list of email senders for your domain. This will include both your email servers, but also third parties that you want to allow to send emails on your behalf. This all works through a DNS record that contains the list of IP addresses or domains that you authorize to have email sent on your behalf. An organization starts by configuring an SPF record in their DNS settings. When an email server receives an email, it's gonna check that DNS entry to see if that email arrived from an approved email server. If it doesn't see that email server, then we know we have problems. SPF helps identify and prevent spoofed emails from scammers and fishers alike, so it's a really important thing to have enabled. But SPF is not alone. It has a counterpart known as DKIM. DKIM, or Domain Keys Identified Mail, is a digital signature that's added to every email. It helps verify the sender's authenticity and that the email content was not modified in transit. This also works through a DNS record that contains a public key that verifies a DKIM signature. That's a cryptographic way of authenticating that email. When an email is sent, it's going to take a list of fields and create a hash of the contents of those. The email server then signs that hash with a private key that only the email server has. This is important because that helps validate the authenticity of that email. When an email server receives that email, it pulls down the public key from the DNS entry and validates the hash. If they match, then it knows that this was a legitimate email and nothing was changed. It knows that because the only way that that could be signed is with that private key that the email server that sent the email has. This is an additional way to protect your domain against malicious emails from attackers that are trying to impersonate your brand. It also has that added benefit of stopping messages that may have been altered in transit. While SPF and DKIM are great, there's one overarching protocol that really ties this together nicely. It's known as DMARC. DMARC, or Domain-Based Message Authentication and Conformance, is an advanced check that builds off of SPF and DKIM verifications. It does what's known as an alignment test. This is just extra credit checks that try to validate did the email originate from an approved server. But most importantly, DMARC provides instructions for the receiving email server on what to do in event one of those checks fail. There are three settings. The first action is none. Take no action as if DMARC was not even set. Then you have quarantine. This allows the email to be sent, but it likely is gonna end up in the user's spam folder. Then we have reject. This is going to have the email server instantly reject the message and it won't be delivered to the recipient at all. DMARC works through DNS entries. The sender first configures that DNS entry with the policies on what they want to do if that DMARC check fails. When the email server that's receiving an email checks that DNS entry, they're gonna get the instructions on what to do if it fails. And then they'll take the appropriate action on that. This is the most comprehensive way to protect your organizations from attackers spoofing your email domain. The reason for that is because it enforces SPF and DKIM and gives very clear instructions on what to do when somebody is trying to spoof your domain. Now that we have an understanding of the key authentication methods, let's move on to some bonus protocols. First up is BIMI, or Brand Indicator for Message Identification. This one's pretty cool. It adds your brand's logo to authenticated email addresses, specifically ones that are already authenticated via DMARC. For some email providers like Google and Yahoo, it also adds the coveted blue check mark to that email. So for that user, when they go to check their email, they're gonna see your brand's logo and a blue check mark, and that's gonna give them the comfort level that this is a real email from you. In order to have this set up, there's a couple requirements though. First, you have to have DMARC established with a reject or quarantine policy set up. Then you have to have a BIMI compliant SVG logo. This is so that the email client knows what to load. Then you wanna have a verified mark certificate or VMC. 
While this is optional, it is recommended because it verifies legal ownership over that logo. You then set up that DNS text record and now people who receive your emails are gonna see your logo and depending on their email provider, we'll see that blue check mark. We just spent a lot of time talking about how to protect outgoing emails. So let's switch it up a little bit here and talk about how to use an email protocol that secures inbound emails to your email servers. And these protocols are all about encryption. The first protocol we'll look at is MTA STS or Mail Transfer Agent Strict Transport Security. And simply put, this ensures that any emails that you're receiving are sent over an encrypted connection. It has a similar process to DMARC where you're setting up a DNS record and you're configuring specific actions that an email server is going to take depending on whether that's an encrypted email or not. It first has the option to do nothing where it's just going to allow everything through whether it's encrypted or not. The next option is testing where unencrypted emails will be accepted but you're gonna get a report telling you all about the ones that weren't encrypted. The last option is enforce, and this is gonna have the email server just outright reject any email that's not sent over that encrypted channel. The impact of this protocol is that it's gonna help ensure attackers can't snoop on emails that are sent to your email servers because it's not happening over an unencrypted channel. Now I mentioned that report feature before, and that brings us to this sister protocol known as TLS RPT or TLS reporting. This protocol is gonna allow you to receive daily reports from external mail servers that send you email. The report will highlight any email delivery issues that happen when an email was sent over an unencrypted channel. It's a pretty straightforward protocol that just works through a DNS text record that has instructions on where email servers should send reports to. This is really important because it makes you aware of emails that you aren't receiving because of this specific configuration. This can be a huge pain point for IT teams if they're trying to troubleshoot why a user's not receiving an email, but they're not aware of this protocol. As you can tell, if you wanna do this even remotely correctly, there is a lot to manage yourself not only for the initial setup, but also in just managing it day to day moving forward. There's a lot of things that can change and you have to change with them. Thankfully, there are tools like PowerDMARC that make this so much easier, which you can learn more about by following this video.